Alright, so today we're going to teach y'all to make a camp stove. Well, first off, I'm going to turn it over to my buddy Jimmy. He's going to start us off today. Thank you, Doc. Alright, so for this, what we need is a can. Any can is, is fine. Uh, size doesn't matter. This is all we have to drink today. You're going to need a pocket knife and some scissors to cut. Uh, to make it easy. All right, first step, take your can, your pocket knife. You're gonna cut a hole in the top. Uh, which, something you don't wanna do is, see that little indent right there? You don't wanna uh, stab your knife in it. You wanna like get the little the top bridge so it's not like uh, bent and crooked and all that. It'll just be straight. All right. So once you get it in, just work your way around. Oh yeah, just letting you know, hold your knife like this. If you're right-handed, your blade should be pointing up so you don't stab yourself in case you slip. And try not to bend the can so much because you're gonna need it. See that hole right there? All right, next step, take your scissors and just cut. All right, see I kind of bent it a little bit, but it's fine, you just push it back. So this part, the bottom decides your top. See this? I'm just gonna cut this a little bit. Just make it even, nice and neat. All right, first off, I'm just gonna cut a little bit. Bend it out a little bit, just like that. Get my scissors again and cut. smooth it's perfect size it can be shorter but no just got lazy uh, all right now like I said earlier the bottom determines the top see how I got like this much left I'm gonna cut that part off and this right here this part so I just got finished cutting the top so you see it's about even same size you know uh, it's all right uh, next step, we're going to make some dents in it, but before we start, I'm going to let my buddy Don take over. Come on, Don. Alright, so basically we're going to start off, if you ever seen a pile of lighter, a crab boiler, crawfish, shrimp boiler, whatever you want to call it. One of those round circles with a little flame shoots up around it. We're basically making one of these out of the top. First off, to start it off, we're gonna wanna put two fingers in here, make sort of like a fork. Make sure you got a good little gap in between your fingers, about a half an inch, centimeter. You're gonna take a sharp object. They ain't gotta be sharp, just like this, kind of flat edged. You're going to want to press in between your fingers and make a little indention like this. 
right here around this top rim where it starts to funnel up. You're going to make another little indention inside the big one. That's going to be your combustion chambers where the flame is going to shoot up from the bottom of the can. You're basically going to do the same thing all the way around. Alright, so basically we're going to have the finished product. As one of the girls up in here once said when we did the project with her, looks sort of like a flower. Pretty, huh? Well, the next step of the project, we're almost there, almost finished. I know some of y'all pyros are probably ready to see some fire. You know, it is a stove. We're going to place it inside the bottom. I told you how to top the size of the bottom. You'll see how that goes together now in a minute. It takes a minute sometimes. You got a, it's a real snug fit, but it fits in nice and snug like that. See how the top has to show above the bottom? There's one last step before we can fire this thing up. I know a lot of y'all pyros watching this. Y'all love fire, so y'all been waiting on this step. There's one last step in the making. You're going to take a knife, anything with a sharp point. You're going to want to get in between two of these indentions in the top of the can, right here in the cone. You're going to make a little carburetor where it can breathe some air. You know, all fires got to have air. So when you set a pot on top, it ain't going to be catching air through here. So you're going to take and work the knife or anything you got with a sharp tip, like a little drill bit almost. Make you a little hole. It ain't got to be a big hole. About as big around as the tip of a pin. Not like that. And that does it for the building of the can. Now the fun part, we get to go light this thing up. Alright, so we're going to start my timer now. It should take between a minute, 30 seconds, two minutes to boil. Then my flame will stay lit. It's really windy out here. Try to block the wind the best I can. As you can see now, I kind of told you a little fib right there. I'm used to the smaller cans I've used in other demonstrations, but it's taking close to 10 minutes. And as you can see now, it's starting to come to a little rumbling bowl. Bigger cans along with the wind blowing, you constantly put the flame put out the flame. If you just blow it out, it's just going to flare up even worse. The easiest way to cut out the flame is to cut off its oxygen, because fire don't work without oxygen. It's sort of like humans. Count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Lift, flames out. Easy as that. If you got extra alcohol, aluminum's a metal. Make the can out of, if some of y'all didn't know. Aluminum pulls extremely fast, see? We're not tricking either. We didn't pause for this. It cools quick enough. I've actually got my hands on it just that quick. So I'm going to take my top piece out of the bottom now. Kind of got to turn it. See all that extra alcohol I've got? You go ahead and save that. Just spin the can a little bit like a funnel and pour it straight back in the bottle for next time. So that's it. And then you just conveniently slide it back in. Your portable cooking stove. 